Are you having trouble in love? Or are you looking for your true soulmate? Maybe many of us want to have a sweet love, a happy marriage. But in reality, we still encounter many falls and pains on the way to understand love. Today, I will tell you a love story that lasted for more than half a century, taken from a novel that is known as the Encyclopedia of Love. It was rated by the New York Times as the most beautiful love story in human history. Hello everyone, this is Evilix, a channel that shares personal development knowledge through meaningful stories from all over the world. Here is the main content of today's episode. Please listen. The book is called Love in the Time of Thrift by McQueen. It tells you a love story that lasted more than half a century. Errang, a poor boy, fell in love with Fermina, a beautiful girl from a rich family, but their social differences and economic gap kept them apart. Fermina married someone else, while Orissa tried hard to improve himself to win back his true love, and after 51 years, with many ups and downs, they finally reunited. This is a great love story that overcame the challenge of time, right? However, behind this dazzling romance lies a cruel reality that we all have to think about. Love is not only built on sincerity, but also on the harmony of comprehensive strength. If you and your partner cannot match each other, then love can fade away no matter how passionate or intense it is. Part 1. If you're not good enough, no amount of love can save your future. Orissa, the main character of this story, is the illegitimate son of the founder of a transport company, who is very rich and powerful, but he has never been recognized or exposed to the public. All the support for Rissa from his father is secret. Then one day his father dies suddenly, and his financial source is cut off. He has to drop out of school and make a living by working in the post office. One day, while sending a telegram, Rissa meets Fermina, whose eyes like plum blossoms glance at him and make his heart flutter. To attract Fermina's attention, he often sits on a chair in the garden near her house pretending to read a poetry book, and he also writes letters to her constantly. In his love letters, he inserts flower petals with tiny poems. At midnight, he stands near her house to play soothing music for her to fall asleep. Gradually, Fermina grows fond of him, and their relationship develops quickly, and Arissa proposes to Fermina. However, everything goes against his expectations. Fermina gets expelled from school for falling in love. Her father gets furious and confronts Arissa, shouting, Don't get in my daughter's way. In the eyes of a newly risen merchant with low education, his daughter is a trump card for his future, while Arissa is just a bastard, a thorn in his side. So he uses distance to separate the lovers, he takes Fermina away from home. However, no matter where Fermina goes, Orissa can always write love letters to her. Seeing that he can't break them apart, her father reluctantly gives her the right to decide her own marriage. After a long time apart, Fermina meets Orissa again, but now in her eyes Orissa is a poor and ugly man who looks like a vagabond, completely different from the image of Prince Charming in her heart before. She suddenly realizes that the love that haunted her was just an illusion, so she decisively breaks up with Orissa. There is a sentence in the book. The weak will never be able to enter the kingdom of love, because it is a harsh and stingy kingdom. And women will only lower their hearts to men who have abilities, because only those men can give them a sense of security. They want that sense of security to face the challenges of life. A straw hut, two golden hearts are not bad, but one day they may have to endure the pain before the challenges of reality. Orissa is smart and talented. However, 
His weakness at that time was like a nail that nailed him to the bottom of society. Although he tried his best to show his loyalty, his lack of progress for many years was a fatal blow to his love story. This is also true for many people, when you like someone, you can throw away all the rules to please them. It's like a moth chasing after their love, but in the end when they don't get a response, they will be disappointed and frustrated. Why is it so unfair when I'm sincere and love someone so much? But you don't know that the real problem lies with you. You don't have enough factors. You're not good enough. No matter how much you love, that love can't save your future. Behind the curtain of love, the daily necessities are always practical issues. This is what anyone who rushes to love or marry needs to face. Part 2. Love is a game of balance. What you need to know to have a harmonious life with the person you love. After breaking up with Arissa, Fermina fell seriously ill, she vomited and had diarrhea. Her father thought she had typhoid and invited Dr. Opino to examine her. When Dr. Opino saw Fermina, he was immediately stunned by her beauty. Her father saw this scene and came up with an idea. Dr. Opino was from a noble family, had excellent medical skills. Besides saving lives, he also cared about social welfare and had a lot of influence in the area. If he married his daughter to him, she would not have to worry about food and clothing for the rest of her life and would have a solid support. So her father tried to arrange it, and Dr. Opino started dating Fermina. After meeting him, Fermina felt that although he was not very romantic, he had good conditions, cared a lot about her, and maybe he would be a worthy person to entrust her life to. So she finally accepted Dr. Opino's proposal. Some people say that marriage is nothing but an exchange, each side gets what they need. Fermina's beauty and Dr. Opino's charm illustrate this very well. It's like an exchange. Wherever they go, as long as they take Fermina with them, her beauty will make Dr. Opino the envy of everyone. As for Fermina, she no longer has the identity of a merchant's daughter, but now she has become Dr. Opino's wife, famous as a person with social status, enjoying wealth and fame. But you know, beauty has to face aging one day, the face full of youth will gradually turn into dry and wrinkled leaves. The slender figure of the past is no longer as light as before. At this point, it seems that the balance in the initial exchange is being broken. As Fermina grows older, her elegance fades away. She becomes a housewife behind her husband's shadow. There is always too much housework to do, making her exhausted. But meanwhile, Dr. Opino's reputation grows bigger and bigger, his vision also gets higher and higher, and then he loses interest in Fermina's old face. He even cheats on her with young women. Although he eventually returns to his family, but now the couple increasingly have a lot of conflicts, often arguing over trivial matters. Fermina had to go through the rest of her life in that heavy atmosphere. There is a saying in the novel, love is a game and you have to always keep the balance and strength with your partner, that way you can love each other for a long time. Because if your partner is too strong, you will be very tired, and if your partner is too weak, you will be very annoyed. That's right, love is a marathon race, when two people fall in love or get married, they start on the same starting line. But whether they can reach the finish line together depends on the overall ability of each person. If they have the same frequency and achieve a state of balance, life will be very harmonious. But when one side is not strong enough, the other side develops more and more, then the distance between them will grow bigger and bigger. If they are not tolerant enough, not loving enough, then the stronger one will take control and love while the other one will automatically become passive and accept their life. 
there is a very good principle in social relationships that is the principle of equal value. It's unreasonable to treat love like a commodity on the market, right? But the truth is like that. Researchers tell us that the happiest relationships are always those that achieve a state of balance. And the author of this book has listed six factors for people to choose their partners, as well as maintain their romantic relationships. They are appearance, wealth, status, knowledge, social skills, and personality or character. You can rate yourself on a scale of 1 to 10 on these six factors. Compare yourself with the person you love. See if you have the same score for each item with the person you love. Or even if we are not equal, the qualities and abilities that you have, the other person does not have, or vice versa, can complement and balance each other so that you can adjust back to a position that you call the balance point. So remember that to run to the finish line together, you have to have the same endurance. Part 3. If the flower blooms by itself, the bees and butterflies will come to find it. Back then, when Arissa was heartbroken after learning that Fermina had married, he was sad and didn't want to talk, didn't eat or drink and cried all night. Later, he learned a painful lesson and started to work hard to change his situation. He came to our company to apply for a job, passed the rigorous tests, and finally was trusted by us to become a key trainee of the company. Orissa's career started to soar, but his emotional face was still like a wanderer without a stop, because in his heart there was always a place reserved for Fermina. Even though he had loved 622 lovers in a row, even had 25 notebooks full of detailed contact information with them. However, that joy was just a drop of dew that quickly disappeared, because it could never replace the unforgettable first love. So being able to start over with Fermina became the only goal of Orissa's remaining life. Orissa took good care of his body, even at an old age he still maintained his energy and strong physique. In his career, he did everything well with admirable ability, and then he also succeeded in becoming the chairman of a rich, powerful, and healthy company. Orissa finally waited for the crucial moment. Dr. Opino died. On the first day when Fermina became a widow, she hadn't wiped away her tears of grief when Orissa appeared. He expressed his love that had been kept for nearly half a century for Fermina, but she angrily kicked Orissa out. Of course he didn't give up, he picked up his pen and wrote love letters to her. His letters were like a sedative for Fermina, and at this point she finally escaped from the shadow of widowhood, followed the advice and decided to board the cruise ship owned by Orissa. On this journey, Orissa arranged the main cabin for Fermina, and amid the clouds and sea, he created an unimaginable love, isolated from the world. The old couple had lost half their lives, but finally they came together and rekindled their love from their youth. Someone asked if Fermina was really moved by love or not. If Orissa wasn't as capable as he is now, but was a poor and ugly old man, and suddenly came to tell Fermina that I love you forever, then would the outcome be the same as now? The answer is clearly no. In fact, Fermina would never choose Orissa again, if he was still as weak as before. This is the reality of life. She decided to board the ship with Ararang, because by now she knew that Orissa's feelings were deep enough, his strength also gave her a sense of security. If the flower blooms by itself, the bees and butterflies will come to find it. When you still don't have what you really want, the first thing to do is to look at yourself. Instead of being discouraged and pessimistic, it's better to calm down and train yourself through practical efforts to improve yourself. Then, you don't have to cling or try to please anyone, 
you will be like a blooming flower, emitting a fragrance that attracts people who love you. Orissa's love under the pen of Ryder McQueen is like the typhoid fever in America at that time. It spreads easily, it kills people and it also resurrects. For Orissa, the pursuit of love that lasted for more than half a century is like an obsession that he can't let go of. In fact, what he clings to is his own self that was rejected before. Only when he proves his strength and gets firm in the back, he can heal the pain in his heart and truly step out of the shadow of failure, regain his lost self-esteem. Orissa's story is very similar to many of us, love someone, do everything to pursue, but be small, miserable like dust, and finally can't escape the fate of being rejected by someone who doesn't love us. You can help train your youth and passion, but don't get any true love back. However, the problem always lies with us. An author said, Among all the responsibilities in the world, the most basic one is to be yourself, live with a unique personality and value. Don't chase a horse when you're not strong enough, just spend time chasing that horse and pile up grass for yourself. When spring is warm and flowers bloom, the horse will naturally be attracted and come to find you. At both ends of the balance of love, don't let your own personality, ability and condition that haven't been developed make you trade on this balance. The premise of love is to first become an excellent self. Only by constantly pushing yourself to shine, reflect yourself, you can light up your love life. The better you are, the more naturally the person you like will come to your side. This book is not only about pure love, but it is a book that helps us learn from the characters who are portrayed realistically as in real life, help you understand how to love, how to cultivate and build your happiness before and while loving someone, no matter what. Love yourself first, learn how to make yourself better. Because when you change yourself, you will become more excellent. You will have enough tolerance and know how to love truly. You will give a unconditional love instead of turning love into an exchange. What we need to do is achieve a state of balance and maintain that state in love. Balance is the best state to maintain long lasting feelings. I really like this saying, learn how to be human from an umbrella. You can't shield others from sun and rain then no one will hold you high above their head. Remember as long as you become better, everything else will gradually improve. To love others, learn how to fill yourself first. The way you love yourself is also teaching others how to love you. I hope we all are sincere people, use our own excellence to have a beautiful and meaningful love experience in this life. Thank you for listening. See you again in the next content.